Hello. Welcome back. <sighs> okay, so today, um, this will be the spoiler-free thoughts of Spider-Man No Way Home that I saw yesterday morning. Um, so yeah, let's get started. All right, so this movie... All right, so first I'm just going to ask that if you have seen the movie already and you're watching this video, please do not spoil it. You know, I don't care if somebody spoiled it for you. That doesn't mean you get to turn around and spoil it for somebody else. And just... You know, be courteous. Um, next video I'll put out in about a week. I'll let, you know, people get the time to actually go see this movie. Because it only, it's only been out for like two days. At least where I am. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just start talking about it. So, first of all, I want to say congratulations to Tom Holland for completing his Spider-Man trilogy. Um... I want to also just say that this was the first Tom Holland Spider-Man movie that I was engaged with from beginning to end, and that's not to say that Homecoming and Far From Home were terrible movies, but they just, I don't know, they didn't really get my attention the way I thought they would like they they were they were they were good movies don't get me wrong but I don't think that they were good Spider-Man movies if that makes any sense um I know one gripe I've had and a lot of people have had is that um um Spider-Man relies too much on other heroes specifically Iron Man seeing as all of his suits except for his homemade one have been for provided to him by Tony in one way or another whether that's directly or you know in Far From Home we saw that he left him like this fabricator and he used that to create his own suit but it was still made with tar Stark tech um, but you no know, this one I I really liked because they actually kind of addressed that point and um, Mm. It, it was it was it was really good i i enjoyed i enjoyed the story a lot um the plot was very very good it was very con it was very there was a lot that happened in it but it wasn't overwhelming things didn't get too mashed together it was easy to follow despite having you know five villains in it and a lot of movies seem to struggle with having more than one villain as we saw in the case of Spider-Man 3 from 2007 um, but this one handled it a really really well really really well it was oh my lord it was so great to see um, some of these old villains pop back up you know Alfred Molina back as Dr. Octopus William Defoe back as Green Goblin slash Norman Osborn, Jamie Foxx as Electro, um, Lizard and Sandman being reprised by their original actors, and um, Peter's interactions with all of them, and seeing the consequences of the ending of Far From Home carry into this one, and you really feel it. You really feel Peter's want of, he wants to fix this. He wants to make it so that it didn't happen. So that, you know, this whole thing goes away. And um, a recurring theme is that he's doing it not for himself, but he's doing it for the people he cares about because their lives get ruined by this as well and 
he kind of comes to terms with, you know, I don't really care that it's affecting me because, you know, I can kind of handle it. But like Aunt May, Happy, MJ, Ned, like they're just, they're, they're kind of screwed by this instance. And it, it carries through the entire film. And it was really cool to see Doctor Strange again. And um, we, we got a one scene with Wong, and it was nice to see him again. I, I love Wong. I love Doctor Strange. I love the whole mystic arts element of the MCU. And um, I'm really excited for Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. That'll be really, really fun. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this film. I really liked Tom in this one versus his other two installments. Um, my issues with the film, I didn't really have too many there, I think. I don't really have like big, like major, like plot hole stuff it was just more like nitpicky um like it it really wasn't it, it was not it wasn't a bad film it was it was really enjoyable i would definitely go see it again um probably a couple more times just to like kind of relive the the hype again, I guess. Some of those really exciting moments, like um, like the villains' entrances. Some of them are just they're so good. They're just so good. Um, like Doc Ock when he when he arrives the the bridge fight that that was a really good that was a really good introduction. He had some dialogue that was just it was just it was like watching Spider Man two again. Um. Same thing with when uh, Green Goblin shows up. It's just like watching Spider-Man 1 all over again. Um, and uh, th there's a slight spoiler about Electro that I really, really want to talk about. But it's not like uh, this will ruin the movie. So his introduction is pretty cool. Um, he's... Like he... So he's he's at so Peter's at the um, he's in the middle of the woods with these power lines and he's he's um, trying to find something. I'm not gonna say what, but he's just trying he's trying to he's trying to find something, and he kind of gets his like spider sense a little bit, and um, it's that shot from the trailer where he's standing facing away from Electro. Electro's behind him and he's he's like coming into existence via the power lines. And there's a close-up of him for just a second, and then his eyes open, and he shoots lightning out, and his theme from The Amazing Spider-Man 2 plays very briefly, but, like, it is, it's just like um, in the movie when it's just, it's loud, it's in your face, you recognize it, and it's not overwhelming, and I really like that they did that. Um, there are some reoccurring lines from the older movies that carry in. Um, and they they fit really, really organically. They're not like a, hey, do you remember this scene from the original movie? Kind of like how um, they did it with like some of the newer Star Wars films where it's... I feel like in this one, they did the nostalgia really well. It's not constant in your face, even though, you know, all these villains are on screen. We haven't seen them, some of them, for nearly two decades. Um, some of them more for more than two decades. But it's not constant in your face, like, hey, do you remember this? Hey, do you remember this? Hey, do you remember this? Or like, hey, you, you like this character, right? Well, here, have, have more. Um, no, I, like, it, they did it well. It was really well balanced. They, they all fit organically. They all had their kind of mini arc. Um, and it, it was just really nice to see them again, especially in a different universe. Um, some of them look a little bit different, some of them act a little different in some sense, but 
you know, it's still them. These like these are the original versions. These aren't just like. It's not like uh, in WandaVision when we got Quicksilver, but you know, it turns out, oh no, his name is just Ralph Boner. Uh, real funny, yeah. Um, I, it, it was real, it was nice to see them again. Um, I would definitely, I would definitely go see this movie again. That is one hundred and twenty thousand percent sure. Um, highly recommend it. Um. Also, I get well. First, I would I guess I would say definitely go see the original Spider-Man trilogy with Tom, uh, Tobey Maguire. I don't know why I said Tom Holland, um, and then the Amazing Spider-Man series. Um, cause you just understand the villains and a little bit about kind of who they are and how they fit into this story moving forward. Um, <coughs> yeah, um, I'd say overall. This movie was like a 9.8 out of 10. Uh, really didn't have too many issues with it. I'm sure on a rewatch, though, there might be more. Might stay the same. Or I might just have misinterpreted something or misunderstood something or might have just missed something in general. And might just go away somehow. Um, so, yeah. Go go watch this movie. Like right now. Uh so yeah. Um about I'll give it, you know, another week or so, maybe a couple of days, let uh, more people see this film and then I'll do a um a full review of the movie with all the spoilers in it. Um because this is a brand new movie. Um, also, if you want to avoid spoilers, avoid the internet as much as you can. Obviously, you know you might catch something, but you know, and if you don't care about spoilers, you know, you can do what you want. But that's just my piece of advice: avoid the internet if you don't want spoilers. But yeah. That's just kind of my initial rundown of the film. Pretty good. 9.8 out of 10. Would go see it again. Um, so yeah. I will see you about a week or so whenever I get the full review up. So talk to you all later.